Letters from Spain. Letter four. Spanish banks. Hello. This week, I wanted to concentrate on what I have discovered to be one of the greatest differences between Spain and the United States: banks. It is a telling contrast, as I hope to show. Most Americans, after opening bank accounts here in Spain, are astounded to learn how limited are the hours in which the banks remain open. My local bank in New York, for example, is open until six o'clock Monday through Friday, and until two in the afternoon on Saturdays. A typical Spanish bank schedule is. To be open until two in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, and possibly later on Thursdays. Nothing on weekends. You realize, of course, that this means there is no time that a person with a normal working schedule can visit a bank. Consequently, half the time I visit a bank, if not more, most of the clients inside are retired. This is certainly an odd situation. Normally, the limited hours of banks are not really a problem. I admit, since I just need an ATM. But there are times when it is desperately necessary to go to a bank. All government fees, for example, cannot be paid in the government office itself for some unknown reason, but must be paid in a bank. Don't ask me why. So if, like me, you need to visit government offices to do the paperwork for your visa, or even if you want to sign up for language classes at a government school, then you need to figure out when you can visit an open bank. But the differences between Spanish and American banking culture goes far deeper. To illustrate this difference, here are two anecdotes. Upon arriving to Spain and opening a bank account, I won't say the bank's name. My brother transferred money from his American to his Spanish account in order to withdraw it here without the fees. Something went wrong with the transfer, though, and he received three times the amount of money that he had sent. You can imagine he was very happy. That is, until the bank automatically froze his account. Now. Here's another curious thing about the way banks are set up here in Spain: if you have any serious administrative issue to resolve, you can't just go to any office of your bank. You need to go to the office where you opened your account. So my brother couldn't go to the bank around the corner; he had to travel half an hour in the metro to go to the bank where he had opened his account. When he arrived, the interaction went something like this: "There's a problem with my account," he said. Let me see. No, it's fine," the clerk said. "But it's not working at all. There's no problem with your account. My ATM card doesn't work, and there's too much money in my account. Let me see." At this point, the bank clerk got up from his desk and accompanied my brother to the ATM outside to see for himself that the card didn't work. Then, after witnessing it, he went back to his chair. Ah, I see now," the clerk said. "Your account is frozen." "Yes," my brother said. "How do I fix it?" "Oh, we'll take care of it," the clerk said. "It will be fine in a couple of days." This sounds reassuring, but this exact conversation replayed itself four times before the problem could be properly addressed. My brother arrived for several weeks in a row, and each time the clerks would insist that nothing was wrong with his account. Then they would insist that the problem would be taken care of. The solution, it turned out, was rather complicated. Somehow, my brother ended up with money from a Lithuanian bank, and he had to send it back. But what was striking for us Americans was the behavior of the bank staff. How could it be that their computer system did not clearly indicate that there was a problem with his account? Why was it so difficult to figure out how to fix it? And why were the clerks so keen on insisting that there was no problem, 
or that the problem would be taken care of very soon. As you contemplate these questions, let me tell you an anecdote of my own. As you know, I've been in Spain for quite a while, and I know this since my debit card, the one that I got during my first few weeks in the country, was about to expire. Foreseeing an issue, I went to my local bank a month before its expiration. Trying to avoid any delay, I requested that the card be sent to this office, which is around the corner from my house. That way, it would be easy to pick up. The clerk assured me that he had put a notice into the system, and it would be there, in that office, before my old card stopped working. All well and good. The month rolled around, and I got a text message saying that my card had been sent in the mail. But there was a problem. It had been sent, not to the office near my apartment, but to the original bank where I had opened my account, which is not near my house. To add to the annoyance, the message told me the street where the bank was located. I hadn't been there in years. But not the number of the bank, not the number of the address. As I learned from Google, there are two banks of the same type on the same street. I proceeded to call both banks. After I figured out which bank was the correct one, which office, I asked if they had my card. Two people looked. One person looked, told me no, told me to call back, then another person looked, told me no. Now I was lost. Was the card sent to my local office, after all? The next chance I could, I went to my local office, and I asked the same man who I had told to deliver it to this office, if they had my card. No, no, he said. It'll be at the office where you opened your account. I called, I said and it's not there. Can they send it here? No, no, it's better if you just go there and get it, he said. Well, the problem, I said, is that I have a job, and I don't work anywhere near this bank. Well, what do you want us to do, the clerk said, adopting this typical Spanish strategy of throwing the guilt back on you. You should have had the card sent to your apartment. Okay, I said, becoming impatient, but what should I do now? Well, find a way to go to the bank. To emphasize, this bank closes most days at 2 p.m., and I work until 4.30 p.m., over an hour away. The only chance I had was to go on a Thursday when the bank closes at 6. If I went straight there from work, I could just barely make it in time. I should also mention that, despite me calling twice and having had two separate people check for my card, and them telling me no, this office really did have my card. The problem was that they filed the card under A for my middle name, Andrew. In Spain, people have two last names, you see, one from their father and one from their mother, and no middle names. So the bank confused my middle name for one of my non-existent last names. Okay, so my card was going to expire soon. Thursday came around. I had to rush from my job to this bank office. I left work and I walked to the train station. A train was waiting. Perfect. I got on board and began to read, as I always do. But there was a problem. The train sat for a long time without moving. And when it finally did begin to move, it went slowly and spent a long time parked at each stop. What was going on? It took us 15 minutes to go three stations, which normally takes less than five minutes. At the next stop, the train completely stopped moving. It was packed with people, desperate people, desperate like me, to get into Madrid. Nobody knew why the train was stopped or when the next train would be. Even the security guards in the station had no idea. Another train pulled up across from us, and then, obeying a herd mentality, everyone switched to this new train. Then the original train that we had all been on began to move. We switched back, hundreds of people rushing across the platform. By this point, I gave up and sat down on a bench. The train was too packed to get on anyway. As I contemplated my next move, the other train, the one which now had basically nobody on it, closed its doors and left the station. The crowd erupted in anger. A man began to shriek in a falsetto at the security guards, blaming them for telling everyone to switch trains, 
Eventually, the security guard began to shout back, and a hilarious screeching contest ensued. I was, at this point, too amused to feel very worried. Then, without any warning, the doors of the original train, the one that did have all the people on it, closed, and the train left the station. Now, this has nothing to do with banks, but I was dumbstruck that the people driving these trains did not simply announce over the PA, PA systems which train was going to leave and when. Such an absurd situation would never have occurred on the Metro North, where I live in Madrid. Then again, I later learned that the delay was caused by a strike of the train staff, which is another thing that would never have happened in the Metro North, because people in America don't strike. Anyways, I finally waited for the next train, which slowly made its way to Madrid. By the time it arrived in Atocha, I only had about 20 minutes I ran into a cab and told the driver to take me to the bank on the on X Street, the relevant street. In the few minutes of the ride, I asked the driver about her job. She works over 12 hours a day with hardly a break to eat, and they say Spanish people are lazy. Undoubtedly, this grueling schedule of the taxi driver is partly results of the new competition from other services like Uber, but that's another story. Anyway, so the cab pulls up to the bank. I pay. I get out. Here, at last. I march into the bank and I ask for my card. The man searches for my name in the computer. Hmm, he says. Your card isn't here. It's at the other bank on X Street, about eight minutes away. Of course, I had forgotten that there were two of these banks on the same street. I rushed out of the office, running like mad to get to the other bank. I get there about seven minutes before they close, panting, sweating. The only clerk at the desk is occupied with somebody, and it looks like a rather complicated issue that they are trying to resolve. I began to panic. I, am, have I just come all this way for nothing? Yet just when I was on the point of giving up and giving in to self-pity, another woman came in, another clerk, talking on her phone. Ah, sorry, she said, seeing me. Okay, Dad, I'll call you back. This, by the way, was another perfect little moment of Spanish culture. A bank clerk happily strolling in after going outside to chat with her dad on the phone. To add to this absurd impression, the clerk actually took a call from a friend in the middle of giving me my card. They are social people, the Spanish. Well, after going on for such a long, long time about the inconvenience of Spanish banking, I ought to add, in the spirit of fairness, that I managed to lose this debit card within two weeks of this whole ordeal. And so I completed the circle of incompetence. And I asked this time that they send it to my apartment. It arrived three days later without any problem at all. So... That's it for Spanish Banks. Thank you very much.